Test, test, test. I think we are live. Happy New Year's, New Year's Eve. Yes. New Year's Eve to everybody. Uh, I'm joined here by Marielle, aka Mary J's <laughs> Halls on YouTube. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> yes, you finally got the invite. You're always like, oh, you're live streaming with everybody but me. How come I never get the invite? Well, today yeah. you got the invite. Mm -hmm. So um, guys, thank you for showing up and being here and taking time out of your busy day to, uh, I guess, celebrate bringing in the new year with us and uh, what we want to do is just kind of have like a fun interactive live stream field any questions you guys might have give our you know best responses if it's related to business related to print on demand related to anything else that's fun you know life in general like let's just have fun with it um as far as you know looking back on 2021 which is crazy that we're looking back on yeah 2021 uh it feels like that year just got started or I don't know, maybe it's just a number behind it that, you know what I mean? Doesn't it still feel like we're in 2020? I, yeah, I guess so. 2022 definitely came quite quickly. Yeah. Really quickly. Like I only started, it's crazy for me to think about. It. I only started my Etsy shop like six months ago, you know, and I'm like so far in it. It does feel like I've been in it for much longer, but the other day I looked and it's, I've only been doing it for six months. Yeah. It's crazy guys. Um, let me know in the comments too. anybody that's here. Uh, if, if it's already 2022 where you live, let me know. I don't know if that's actually the case for anybody yet, but it's got to be getting close somewhere in the world, right? Um, Happy New Year to everybody, though, that's been commenting. John, Alan, Robbie, Mikey, Andreas, Muhammad, Imran. Uh, and let, let us know, guys, too, like, what was the biggest surprise for you in 2021 as far as, like, your online business goes, you know? Um, was it that you didn't think you'd ever get into like Amazon merch and you ended up getting in? Uh, was it that you found success on Etsy? We want to kind of talk about Etsy today because Marielle is, um, that's like her my, favorite. My jam, yeah. yeah that's for your favorite. Like, for me, my my resolution over the last year, not resolution, but my revelation more so was that like I started merch a year ago, let's say, but I started Etsy six months ago. And it has only taken me six months to realize Etsy is so much better than Amazon merch. Sorry, guys. For it's not so much better. So Get out of here. So much better. I am sorry. I I love Etsy so much more. Um, it's like a pleasure to actually do, whereas I feel like merch is sometimes dreadful for me. So yeah, I, merch. I'm I loving mean, Etsy. I'm loving it. I like that you're in merch tier 1000 because it gives me like a reset on my perspective of what it's like to be in the low tiers to not have infinite slots yeah um we have uh nim shrez saying that december was the biggest month in merch by amazon oh good yeah good i'm glad everybody had a good month hopefully everybody had a good month if you guys want to let us know how many sales you made in uh december i'll, I'll share it with the stream uh, i'm pulling up mine over here on my side monitor well i i didn't do great in december for whatever reason you know i hit that christmas niche hard but I do think that some of my <laughs> your Christmas sweater niche. Yeah, I do think that some of my designs are probably being like subdued. Um, that's what I'm hoping because they were really good designs. So, and they sold just as well on Etsy for a higher markup too. So, yeah, like we did a uh, we did a batch of I won't say the niche, but like we did a bunch of Christmas sweaters that were relevant to the times, let's say like, you know, I always like to, like, I don't want to just go and say, try to rank on like ugly Christmas sweater. That's going to be super hard. So we did a batch of like Christmas sweaters that we collaborated on and she was making more sales on Etsy, right? Than, yeah. than merch, oh even God. though she uploaded them to both. But here's the thing that you guys might find interesting. Like I uploaded them to my merch account as well, but I was pricing them like minimum $2 higher than what you had them priced at. Yeah. Yet between us, with all of them uploaded, I still made the first sale. You know what I mean? So that means that like I've got the same exact design, slightly different keywords, but for the most part. Yeah, pretty much. And I made the first sale on a shirt that they could have just found yours. And, and bought for a couple dollars less. Yep. So it is really kind of like a roll of the dice on who gets there first. Even with zero sales, it's interesting to figure out who's actually showing up first. But we're, we're talking about Etsy today. Yeah, we'll talk about Etsy. I wanted to show you guys in case anybody was curious. Um, my December of sales on Merch by Amazon. So there you go. Uh, looks like U.S. market we did ten thousand five hundred. Now this is not factoring in like ad spend. I definitely had um, some ad spend. I think the total ad spend is going to come to like twenty five hundred bucks, which honestly is higher than I wanted it to be. Uh, what I realized was that after the 
like basically when the the red text showed up on the listings and it said arrives after Christmas, like I needed to be very proactive about like turning my ads either off or scaling them back. And um, I spent a lot of money in that like couple, like one to two to three days yeah. where it was just maxing out my budgets. Um, Cause I think a lot of other advertisers pulled back. Uh, but yeah, 10,500 US market, um, 828 pounds sterling, and then 286 euro, 103 euro, 233 euro, 162 euro. And what's the conversion rate on like 286? 286 euro to USD. Like 286 would 325. be 325 USD in Germany. In case anybody was wondering, let me know how you guys did though in the uh, the chat and I'll show it off in the uh, the stream. So Andrea said, happy New Year's Eve. Only till December 20th, then sales are pretty slow. Yeah, my sales slowed down big time on Seller Central, by the way, because I did, uh, I extended all my handling times out to like 14 days, which was kind of playing it super safe. Yeah. And as soon as it tags the listings with like not guaranteed to arrive before Christmas. Yeah, I get that too. Debbie, shout out to Debbie. Um, Happy New Year's to you. Happy New Year's TQ. Michael says, Happy New Year. You made my POD journey this level. Uh, I did not expect. Thank you for all your insights. Looking forward to great 2022. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for subscribing. Happy to help. Kathy didn't think you'd ever make over 200 sales this past December. Whoa. Great job. That's awesome. Um, shot up fast. Marielle. Debbie said, why do you like Etsy more? For I mean, there's just so many different reasons. The there's I and I want to do a video on the full write down kind of of the benefits of Amazon merch and the pro, uh, cons of it, as well as the benefits of Etsy and the cons of it. Now with Etsy, the thing that I really love the most is there's no limit to how many listings you can post. But in addition to that, you can batch edit. So batch editing for me has been like one of my favorite things. Whether that's pricing, like templates, photos, descriptions, tags, and keywords. So I just find it to be way more useful and user-friendly than Amazon Merch. And I just like the fact that you're not limited to what or how much you can put off. Because the censorship on Amazon Merch was the most annoying thing I've had to go through all year. Well, even not even, you know, yeah, there's the that. The censorship was bad. When you say censorship too, it's like, you know, like the Let's Go Brandon stuff, for instance. Like regardless of like where you fall on like the two-party paradigm, it's like, it's scary to think that like, whether you like it or don't like it, it doesn't matter, right? You could just be selling it because it's what people are buying. And then all of a sudden your entire account is threatened because they on, you know, overnight decided it wasn't allowed anymore. Well, all I know is like it, from November to December, that's not I even had what you were selling. 33 rejections. Right, but that, you weren't even selling that too. For, I mean, I was worth. selling, you know, certain things, not let's go Brandon, because we all know that's a big no-no. But like the fact that it is a no-no is absurd. I hate that about merch. So on Etsy, I make a killing on those kind of listings. Yeah, there's more freedom on Etsy, although that could be limited as well time-wise. I mean, you know what I mean? Anything subject to change, just remember like why we're doing this, right? It's a business. We're trying to make some money. We don't want to lose all the effort we put in. So yeah. just play by the rules. It sucks. But uh, shout out to Pablo, by the way. He <laughs> come in and say hello. Um, Kristen's new and needs encouragement to keep going. Uh, Kristen, like the biggest thing I'd say, well, I don't know. Why don't you give some suggestions you you've been newer yeah recently more recently than me. yeah no those first upcoming tier i mean breaking through those first level tiers are extremely hard and the best advice i can give is definitely follow trending niches in order to get those tier ups because if you start with evergreens and stuff which is something that i kind of played around with it wasn't really working for me until i found like a niche that was being talked about on the tv and a niche that you would see in articles all over or on instagram so it's it's extremely hard getting through those first few tiers. I think that's almost the hardest part of merch. Now that I'm a little bit higher, it's not as hard, but yeah, and it's not always like cut and dry where it's um where it's sorry, the comments like fly off the screen sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out it. Uh like for instance, right now I'll pull up flying research just so we can all look. And like if I'm doing niche research, like yesterday Marielle texted me, like, what should I be selling in? And I honestly just said like probably right now just evergreen niches that sell well because there's not always like a low hanging fruit uh clear cut yeah. path to what you should be selling. You know like in 2020 that whole year it just felt like there were niches that weren't selling the week before that were like 10,000 BSR average the next week. Like it was just crazy the how fast things moved in 2020. For print on demand that was like a crazy year. But like this is more of a normal, like right now, for instance, like a normal time period. 
yeah it's a normal time period i'm waiting for something good to happen yeah so and I, i'm not a huge fan of like just necessarily going to the first thing our brains think of which is what's the next big holiday that everybody's gonna celebrate like valentine's day or something right i i like to do more like if i if i take a glance at the best sellers right now um we know we're not selling the let's go brandon stuff uh v is for video games so they're combining valentine's day with video games that's been done many times but like that to me we know that there's a ton of volume in the video, video game, game valentine's yeah. day cross niche i don't know that necessarily like a gamer would care about a valentine's day t-shirt though that's the only thing yeah. that as a gamer myself like i'm like eh, is that the best way of approaching it but um i don't know like you could probably make like a shirt about you know I, i'm not old i'm classic kind of like vintage cars well what about vintage video games you know i've been telling you about like I've been I've been I started a, a vintage video game collection this week randomly <laughs> and uh it's like that that could be like a video game collector right v it's like video games plus a hobby collecting right so something like that could be uh, a, a way to spin it um just thinking out loud here you know what I mean Yellowstone by the way that tv show is so good I wouldn't feel comfortable selling uh things that were trying to capitalize off of the popularity of that show yeah, no. And for but how good part, is that show? <laughs> that show is amazing. But when I was doing a bunch of uh, niche research the other day, it seems like all the sellers of this are either Paramount Plus or big, oh, really? Yeah, big name companies. So it's definitely like a, a stay away from. Now that I have thirty three rejections, I'm like so scared if I do anything else. And I was getting rejected on things that I already had listed. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. Like same key, same exact keywords because I pulled it from my other listing that sells well. No, any listings I have from like twenty early twenty eighteen and before, I never update. I never update. You no, know, I don't update them because they will generate them. rejections. Though it's weird. Like I don't know exactly what keywords it is that are contained. It's like I used to share description between every listing, and it's like if I see sales on an old listing that I want to increase the price, I just don't touch it because there's just too high likelihood of a rejection. Not that I even did anything wrong initially. It's just that like something in there is going to trigger it. You know? Yeah, which is why I'm an Etsy girl now. Yeah, Etsy's definitely a little bit more. I love relaxed. it. And you can charge more on Etsy, guys. I charge way more on Etsy for the same exact shirts I sell on merch. Yeah, you do. You get I away know. with murder. <laughs> she charges quite a bit on Etsy every now and then. Um, but yeah, guys, just taking a glance at the niche research tools. By the way, you don't have to pay for a research tool. You can always just go straight to like, uh, Amazon and, and look at the merch t-shirts, um, the search merch tool is the easy one. Yeah. And, uh, just kind of scroll and see what's like, what's soaking up a lot of, of sales. Um, there are a lot of cat shirts, uh, hunting shirts, video games. And like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say Valentine's day. Cause I just, I'm not as big of a fan of like shirt that will sell around that time of year, but not the rest of the year, but I'm also into your 200,000. So no, I don't specifically wait for holidays. I would like you know things that are like social movements yeah you that's have a shirt that does this right yeah and, and that's you make sales well. yeah yeah so this is one example that was in top five niches of the week which like, my shirt was in top five yeah she hers or hers made it in too yeah but like all she did was she saw this one and we don't even need to understand why it's selling like it's just like hey look it's the standard vintage retro sunset from probably all sunsets reagan put him over top and then put some text and it's like a simple formula we don't even need to know why it's selling throw it up yep. make some sales now she's not making as many sales as this one no but you know what i do do is i do <laughs> come over to the the same shirts that have good bsrs and i pretty much and sorry if this is any of you guys' <laughs> shirts copy and paste the keywords because i'll do my own keyword research too and shove in anything else i can think of but if they're getting ranked on these keywords i want to be ranked on those well keywords. and the other side so. of that too is you're not going to get a rejection by well most of the time, right? Most. Of the yeah. Time. If it's like it's a, a shirt before. that's like super old, then it's not as reliable. But if it's like a newer shirt and you just kind of clone the keywords, uh, <laughs> like, you know, it's not going to get I a rejection. I add my own stuff in so. too, but like I definitely, yeah, use good BSR keywords if I'm making a similar shirt. Why not? Yeah. These shirts sell extremely well, guys, but I don't feel comfortable selling them because it's like I don't play Dungeons and Dragons, but I think that's what it's related to. Um, but like, you know, in Christmas this past year, this Q4, we saw a bunch of these come out of nowhere and we're selling like mad, you know, and uh, mm. I, I don't know that I'd feel comfortable selling them, but like at the same time, it's. See, now I sell Dungeons and Dragons stuff on my Etsy account. And the reason is because Etsy's way Let's more fluid, <laughs> fluid and easy. 
to work with. I'm telling you, uh, I'm like a forever Etsy girl now. Good day. Eh? I mean, I'm still going to play the game Just on both, safe. but <laughs> Etsy... I have to say Etsy's got well, I mean, when you use the Printful integration, it's got better products. The quality of the products is better. I make my own products all the time for myself. And the quality, I have to say, Printful's quality is amazing. It's When you bought a shirt from Merch versus you buy a shirt from Printful, yeah. which do you typically like better? It's always Printful, 100% of the like, time. Um, yeah, no, we did the we did the review every Merch product video uh, last year. If you guys missed that, check it out on my channel. And um yeah, the merch products like the Port and Company are not that nice. Although the premium shirts, the Bella Canvas 3001, and that was nice. But I've never seen this shirt, by the way. And um, this is one of those yeah, things fun. where you guys want to know how to get like into a trend kind of early. Oftentimes, all you need to do is kind of like check the best sellers kind of regularly. And when you're scrolling and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, by the way, this shirt about the train station. Yeah. Like now that we watched Yellowstone, we're like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> Because I was like, why are all these shirts about train selling? And now we've watched Yellowstone and it's like, all right, got it, got it, got it. Watch Yellowstone if you guys haven't already. But yeah, let's go Darwin. I don't know where this came from. I don't know when it was posted. We can scroll down. December 23rd, 2021. That was Couple eight days, days ago. ago. Yeah, and it's selling quite well. So this could be the start of something. If you want to know why it's selling well, you can Google it and try to figure it out. But you know, you don't even really need to go that far. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not scared of like, I used to be scared of creating a design and then deleting it for a design that I think is better. But now that I'm in it more, you know, I'm not nearly as scared. And I think it's really helpful for people to learn. Like if you have a design that's not selling, even though you want to fill your slots, just delete it and create another design that's trending. Yeah. Like in, in merch, if your slots are uh, limited, definitely, definitely. Um, don't be afraid to delete products that even if you uploaded them like two weeks ago like to me like i want to make room for new ones even if it's resubmitting a product that's been up for like 10 days just resubmit it you know what i mean um all right let's get some questions uh are there sales in january um my sales in january definitely drop off relative to december but like last year december to january to me surprised me i did really well in january relative to what i expected so hopefully that remains true this year uh happy new year julius Four sales, Khalifa, in uh, December. Hopefully, you know what, though? Like, keep that long-term perspective on how this all kind of works. And next year is going to be huge. You know what I mean? Just don't quit. Like, I don't know. It's like a mindset thing. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Sometimes I want to quit merch. Never <laughs> Etsy, but always merch. Really? I, like, always want to open up new Etsy stores, new Etsy stores. I just see better movement on my Etsy account with, and I'm using the same exact designs as I am on merch. So it's like... No, guys, like diversify and like the whole Etsy thing. If you guys haven't started, don't be scared of starting Etsy. The integration's like two clicks to integrate Printful with Etsy. Starting Etsy is free. Starting Printful is free. Um, I should have put a link in the description with your Etsy link because yes. you can before you sign up for Etsy, guys. Make sure you you uh I can grab the link really quickly yes, while I talk. The link. Make sure you use somebody's invite link because you get 40 free listings. If you don't do that, you don't get 40 free listings. So it's like, yeah, take the 40 free. There's no reason not to. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll grab this link. Uh, what else is everybody saying? Happy New Year. Kathy made 240 sales in Ooh. December. Woo. Hey, they've dropped off since then. But I mean, that's just kind of showing you what's possible in a good month. Plus, December sales can happen outside of December. You just have to be kind of ranked on big trends. You know what I mean? And that's not, that's easier said than done. There's no formula where anybody can guarantee you success there. Yeah. Um. But like I did it in August. That was what really made me take Etsy seriously. That one year where I was, uh, I had basically like a trending design and I just like was crushed ranked it. extremely well. Yeah. yeah and uh, crushed. Made no, like I did really well in November, December. Those were my two best months for me. Um. And I think most of my sales, I think I have currently like 400 sales under my account. And I think 300 of them or something came from those two months too. So it worked out really well. But like I said, my pricing is really high. I don't, I don't do it to make a little bit of money. I'm like in it for the, I would rather a little bit less sales with a higher price, but I play around with it too. And there's a bunch of fun things that you can do like loss leaders and creating these 
um, price incentives almost for your clients that you cannot do on Amazon. And I love right. that you can like customize it. You can tailor it. You can send out promo codes to people that have things in their carts or are favorited. And it's just like, you don't have any of that usability on merch. And that's another reason. I mean, there's so many It's a double edged like. sword though, right? Cause I on merch, so it's like, you don't have to do all that extra stuff that are like best practices to running an e-commerce business. So it's like on merch, you okay. don't have to do them. And for somebody who like doesn't want all the extra responsibility or maybe like doesn't have it in them to like do the extra stuff. But it's it, they make it as easy as one to click. You can batch yeah. edit all your listings like in literally two clicks. Like, yeah, guys, there's no reason not to be doing that extra work because it's so easy. Yeah, like your your print on demand journey in my mind for like a newer seller should be like start with Amazon merch just because like massive upside. You're on the biggest e-commerce website. And what I love most is that they restrict your ability to do a lot of the stuff that Marielle is talking about. Yeah. Well, I don't like that. Well, well, but if you're new, That's what it's I good. I complain about every day. <laughs> if you're new, it's good though, because you're not getting like um, overwhelmed overwhelmed with like, oh, what sh should I be clicking that? Should I be learning this? And like big learning curves can make people intimidated. Yeah, I agree. But I didn't start learning that kind of stuff until like halfway through my et six month Etsy experience. You know, I was doing it basically how I knew how to do merch, you know, cut and dry, super simple. Then once I started playing around with things and like feeling more confident in my process, there's so many opportunities you can take advantage of with the Etsy Printful platform integration. Like there's just too many that I haven't even figured them all out yet. And I'm still learning new right. stuff. So And plus without like any any like lean on what you should be doing, like you can literally just iterate through the process of a uh, new day, going to post two new shirts. And they're going to sit there. You know what I mean? And if, you know, you post 10 shirts a week and that increases your weekly sales by one a week for this year and that, that continues into the next year, you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like just think long term about building your recurring sales, even though it's not, you know, it's not guarantee, right? But we know that more products you have for sale, the more money you'll probably make. And then you get extra reward in the end of year, December and whatnot. And yeah, and with the Etsy Printful integration, they've got way more products that you can choose from too. So it's like mm -hmm. you can take one design and put it on 30 different style hats. And, you know, sometimes I'll just even go to Shutterstock, download a graphic that has more than one graphic in it because it counts as one download. And then I chop them up and I put all those designs on hats or shirts or something. And it ends up working because eventually you like own that little market space that you're entering and it, it's super simple. Like yeah. I, I buy my own stuff all the time. No, what she was saying too, guys is like something that I don't ever really teach or talk that much about on YouTube. Cause it sounds like bad advice, or at least like if I see myself like listening to me, I'm like, that's stupid advice. But like, seriously, like a lot of what I've done in the past, that's not making me rich by any, by any means. And it's not making her rich, but it, yet it works like where you can not even do niche research, just take a good graphic and be like, oh, this will look good on a hat or this will look good on a shirt or this will look good as a sticker and just sell it and see what happens. Like, yeah, like you said, she me. went to Shutterstock. I don't know why you had credits on Shutterstock, but like <laughs> she was like, I'm just going to download graphics for print on demand. And then uh, she was telling me what she was going to do. And I was like, that's not going to work. And it worked out well. Yeah, it worked really well. So it's, proved <laughs> but me wrong. it's something as simple as like going and downloading a smiley face PNG and putting it on a bunch of fun hats like the tie dye beanies and the bucket hats and stuff. And it worked. What well, was your keywords? You marketed it correctly. Well, well, there's that too. I also marketed it correctly. Because um, you could take it a different way and not market it right. And then it would probably get no well, sales. Well, and again, another nice thing about the Etsy platform is you can front load keywords in the title, which you can't really do on Amazon, you know? And then I just copy paste, put it in the description, and then just write a whole line of tags that I can copy and paste into all the other variations of the same design that I'm doing. So yeah, it it's so user friendly. Yeah. Save your uh, keywords. If you're going to list multiple listings, like save them somewhere. And that way you can, instead of having to rewrite them, just, uh, and by the way, there's going to be something, the biggest thing in 2022, actually, you know what? Leave that as a teaser. Um, our friend Curtis is working oh, on the biggest, yeah. the biggest, uh, the biggest, most relevant thing for print on demand in 2022. We'll tell you guys about that's just my prediction, anyways. We'll we'll talk about it in a little bit though. Um, all right, let's get some more comments. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say for your journey for a beginner though, like Amazon merch, because it's simple, then move to Etsy because it's like more of a e-commerce business in that you have more things that you control. And if you actually do them, 
you're almost like guaranteeing yourself success because a lot of people don't do them. And then from there, it's like you can go to Shopify from there. And what you're really doing is like you're inheriting more responsibility as you go. Yeah, but it's a slow build up, and then you can yeah, see what works best for you because you know some niches that you guys might want to target might just do better on Etsy than they do on Amazon. And I know yeah. that's true for me. I know my niches that I'm in right now absolutely are selling better for me on Etsy than they are on Amazon merch. Yeah. So, and it's weird. There's no like we like to think it's like binary, like things black and white, but it's like even when we listed the same products on our separate merch accounts, and I marked mine up two dollars, and yet like I probably sold more. Yeah. And we had the same number of listings, same, just slightly different keywords. Nothing was different beyond that. And um, for whatever reason, the algorithm gave mine, or maybe it wasn't even the algorithm. Maybe it was just luck of the draw that somebody clicked mine over here. I don't know, you know, but they were the same. Um, all right. Are you using Etsy more for clothing, POD, both? I do POD, POD but it's all clothing stuff. So when you integrate with Printful, you've got like options of like over probably a thousand products that you can choose from um, between clothing, hats, home goods, et cetera. Maybe she meant like your clothing too. Maybe she checks out your other YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so she's like Poshmark for that or something? No, I use the Allo basically. Yeah. But um, no, yeah. So I do, I do POD on my Etsy. Uh do you find the merch team are frustrating people to deal with Kevin? Yes. Um, I mean, I've never actually, like, I have no ins at the merch team or anything like that. Like I, my understanding is that they are a small team, you know, mm -hmm. and they do the best they can. Like they field a lot of responses. Um, the alternative is probably that they like don't accept as many sellers into the platform. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I don't actually know, but I, I thought somewhere I heard that they're a pretty small team, especially relative to the number of sellers. So I think they just kind of do the best they can. Um, given the constraints, like it, it would be great though, to like have like a, a better response of like why we got rejected, but I don't think it's possible without, you know, hiring yeah. more humans to like really do real due diligence as well. And, and I feel uh, like Amazon gl has glitches sometimes too, where it's just like in a rampage of anger. Five hours till New Year's in Belgium. Oh. <laughs> Kristen, I started Redbubble, uploaded a lot of similar designs, changes in the years. Redbubble suspended my account. Yeah, see, I've never dealt with a Redbubble suspension, but I've seen plenty of people saying that they get suspended for no reason. Kind of sounds like when you sign up for Etsy and integrate Printful, a lot of people immediately get suspended. I opened a new Etsy account that I'm going to use in 2022. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not selling print on demand. I'm going to sell. Well, like I said, we're teasing about what's coming. I'll tell you guys what I'm going to sell. In no, that's my space still. No. Oh my God. Okay, fine. Compete against me. We'll see who does better guys. Um, 2023. We'll be back for a live stream to let you guys know who wins. So Etsy tips. Um, we'll go through some in a little bit. I think I, I prepared like a, like five slides that just Etsy related that we'll talk about. Uh, Ryan may I ask you, can you consider Redbubble a good investment? I just wouldn't prioritize Redbubble over um, Amazon or Etsy, for instance, just because yeah. there's, no reason to prioritize it over them, but if you can do it in addition to them, like I put a video out, I think just a couple of weeks ago, just reminding everybody that if you set up one really good listing on Redbubble, you can just go in, clone it. And when you clone it, all you have to do then is swap out your old image for the new one and then do your keywords. And so you can post new listings to Redbubble in like 60 seconds. And uh, to me, like if it takes that long, I mean, there's no reason not to be doing it for everything, right? Um, but Redbubble, I mean, it's lowest barrier of entry, so you're going to get more competition, less sales. Just just what it is. Happy New Year. Just applied for merch. Hopefully, I get accepted. Good luck. Um, I don't really have, like, true tips on getting accepted because my understanding is that it's, like, the volume of applications they receive is so high that it's just algorithmically approved. If you don't get in, just reapply. Um, that's the best I can say. Like, there's YouTube videos talking about, like, what you should write, but, like, I mean, at the end of the day, guys, the volume that they see and the fact that they're a small team and that there's no money in hiring, you know, 100 employees to field these applications, yeah. right? There's no money in doing that. So I guarantee you they're not. Um, what do you use to batch upload on Etsy? Um, we've, been, we've been using Merch Titans. Yeah. We've been using Merch Titans upload automation. Uh, I mean, also, though, you, you did plenty of manual listings. Oh, I think the majority of my listings are manual listings, um, which... Like I said, took me six months and I have how many listings do I have? I think I have like 6,000 listings know. at this point. I don't even know. Yeah, I, I know 6, you're over 000. a thousand. That's Yeah. I think six. I haven't looked recently. 
something like that. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it takes a little while, but the nice thing is after you, I typically like to do things in set themes. That way I can copy like description and keywords and stuff. So you try and think about it, like doing it in a efficient way, you know? So it's like, if you have a bunch of smiley face hats and stuff, you don't do like smiley face hat, then like a rainbow hat. You do all of the smiley face hats at once, which is just keywords, yeah. description, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So you would create like five listings in a row. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I just click all of the items and say, um, change production partner, printful, and then publish. Yeah. And it does it to all of them. Yeah. So you don't need like upload automation per se, but, uh, and when you said batch upload, like, I don't know that you can't use like a CSV in, in upload. I don't know. I've never I looked, but I know a lot of platforms support that. And Etsy, you know, they charge 20 cents per listing. So, I mean, it's in their best interest to let you do something like that. Um, yeah. So you have a lot of free listings. So that's why she has the benefit of like taking a good design and just throwing it up. Like even before it's necessarily like a normal person who pays for every listing you create, I would say throw it up on a t-shirt, right? We know t-shirts are the best sellers or depending on hats. whatever niche. I sell way more hats. Yeah, but like that's, I think something different. You haven't Maybe. done all of the like optimizations for your shirts and that's where you're going to compete with the most cutthroat people. And, uh, and like, you know, if you don't do every optimization and you're in a competitive space and your competition's doing every optimization. Like you've done most of them, but yeah. the manual effort required to do your thumbnails better I know. is what you're missing. And so you might be next to somebody who did that. And then, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of tics, trip, tricks and tips to like getting a better visibility on your Etsy, which you don't have that power on merch. No, you don't. No, merch is very uh, limited. Cut and dry. Happy New Year's, Caesar. Love to see uh goals video 2022. Good, good call. By the way, Caesar, man, what up? Uh, subscribe to Caesar if you want good tips on like mining crypto. Me and him have been like emailing and calling back and forth, working on uh he mining helium, which is a cryptocurrency that uh we're bullish on, and he's helping me out there. Um, still working on like I've got one setup going, but it's not optimized yet, so still working on that. That's 2022 for me, early 2022, due to the struggle of getting it up. Uh, correctly. Andre loved the Amazon ad course. Thanks, man. I'm glad you um, found it useful and hopefully it helped boost those December sales advertising. Like we talk about merch, for instance, um, cause you can advertise anything on Amazon, FBA, merch, KDP, et cetera. But um, for merch, that's like one, it's like the one extra thing you can do. Yeah, it's like the it. one thing you can do is ad advertise. Well, I need to get into that. The only place I've tried running ads, running ads was Parlor, which was a mega fail. Tell them real quick about, so give them a quick summary of like you ran a Parlor ad to Gear Bubble. Yes, I ran a Parlor ad to Gear Bubble based on a good. It was very optimized for Parlor. The listing or the um, design that I created was extremely catered to the people that would be on parlor christmas themed as well so it was just a double niche that was selling really well and i made one i spent 250 dollars <laughs> to make seven dollars so it was a mega fail the 250 lasted me less than a day um and i think they were ending up putting posting the ad on facebook in their facebook group rather than on parlor because i don't see ads when i get on parlor just like you were saying too um so it was mega fail. Don't recommend it. Yeah. I'll post a link to the uh, um, parlor ad $250 fail in the chat in case anybody wants to check out her video on it. But I mean, it was just an idea that seemed like it had potential. Her, the failure was not on her part. It was really on that like parlor as a platform did something extremely weird and wasn't very transparent about what it was they did. Yeah. I think they just ran a Facebook ad. Like you said, I think they ran yeah. a Facebook ad and, within their business page on right. Facebook. Yeah. So it just like did not work at all. But like when you guys run ads, like if you advertise on Amazon, it's like, okay, you don't have to convince somebody to buy they're on Amazon because they want to buy something. Yeah. Right. And if they do a keyword search, it's like, now you have the correct niche that they're looking to buy and they're already on Amazon. So they want to buy. So it's like easy and easy and easy. If you are, you know, like on Facebook, you have to like segment your ads and try to get them in front of the right people based on like demographic and psychographic characteristics that you know about your audience. And it's not like a perfect formula. You're gonna have a lot of wasted ad spend. But the reason we, we thought of Parler was because like, yeah, it's a lot of like Republicans. So give them, you know, things that Republicans like. Well, especially since uh, Amazon was banning them. Yeah, so and Amazon was, was like, banning them. I right. created all these designs. Amazon rejected them. So I was like, 
these designs are so good. I know my designs were good, guys. Some of my designs are terrible. This one's were good. So I was like, I need to get them in front of better people because I wanted them Christmas sales. But again, it still failed. It ended up working better on Etsy than anywhere else. Yeah, it's just interesting that that parlor flopped so hard because I was like, if you don't do it, I'm going to do it because I thought it would be like just even with my designs, my idea. Crazy. Um, Nimshrez updated the price of an old listing, added Raglan shirt, got rejected. Yeah. Um, again, I don't know necessarily, like, I know that there's definitely been changes in the content policy over the years. And it just got to the point for me where it's like, I don't want rejections. Like, I'm just trying to be super safe with my account, especially like being on YouTube, you know? Yeah. So I just like, don't even update old listings. It's just not worth it to me. So I have listings that make like $0 a sale and they just sit there and I'm scared to touch them. Um, Ryan, would you recommend yourself in the beginning with print on demand? What would you focus on? Invest your time. What would you avoid? Uh, like I was saying, like Merch by Amazon is a great starter if you can get in. Um, while you wait to get in, by the way, like you can start a Redbubble account and upload today, like in the same day. And Printful Etsy, again, $0 in startup cost, especially if you use the link that I dropped or just Google it and find somebody else's link. Um, or go to bit.ly forward slash Ryan's method. That'll take you to the... 40 free listings. I just keep saying, cause I don't want you guys to pay for listings if you can get 40 for free. So if you start on Etsy, just get the 40 free listings and start posting. Uh, I've opened my Etsy store about a month and not one sale. I've listened to your videos. Not sure why you can email me a link to your Etsy shop. Um, I don't have like a formal way of doing the Etsy shop reviews. Typically people just email me them and I just kind of make a list so I can take a look at your Etsy shop. My email is on my YouTube channels about, about tab. On merch, will they tear you up if you don't have all your slots filled? You want to answer? They definitely prefer if you have your slots filled, but I have been teared up occasionally without the slots filling. But there's also, they skip me a lot too during tear ups. And I don't know what that is, if that's a function of rejections or, or returns. So it's really hit or miss, but I would definitely recommend keeping your slots full. There's no harm in yeah. that. You want to fill your slots. Like, I think if you're 75% to 80% full, you're fine. Um, but like, there's no like rule about it that we can see publicly. So uh, that's the thing. But like, yeah, like she had her slots filled and had more sales than her tier and missed like four up or four tier ups. Yeah. So she sat in tier 500 for like way longer than uh, you needed to. And then we just kind of like rushed to fill up your slots and you should be in the next tier up to tier 2000. Yeah. But I don't know when it's going to happen. So you could get skipped again. <laughs> Uh, Amazon is auto uploading my designs to their other markets and still in tier 10, 18 sales. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say based on the past, which doesn't, you know, guarantee anything about the future, but, uh, December, like they don't tend to accept people as often. So you're probably more likely to like not get accepted, or you might just have to wait extra long to hear back about your merch application and tier ups are less frequent yeah. in this time of year. Cause there's just like a lot of burden on their servers. Even for, you know, AWS. <laughs> Followed video, applied for merch. Good luck. Um, here's the Etsy free listings URL, guys. Um, if you're new to Etsy, if you're already on there, I don't think it works. And uh, that'll um, give Marielle 40 free listings whoop, as well. Whoop. <laughs> happy New Year from Denmark. Thank you. Inspiring. Awesome. Uh, Keld, happy that we were able to, able to help you with the Etsy stuff. Yeah, definitely just focus on, you know, scale. Scale, guys. What's so cool about print on demand is the passive aspect, even though, I mean, when you're starting, like, I don't think that just because automation exists that you should jump into using it. Right. No, no. I waited quite a while and yeah. I still do a bunch of stuff manually too. Now with Etsy, I'm more likely to do automation due to the fact that I've got a, a lot of slots left and there's no limitation on how much I can upload. But with Amazon merch, I'm really in the, still that phase of manually uploading. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to upload automation there. Um, yeah, I mean, I did, I uploaded probably like 3,000 listings manually to Etsy and 13,000 to Merch by Amazon for sure. Because I counted before I ever used the upload automation. Yeah. But like I said, I always like to be transparent. Like when I did it, you could, um, there was no throttling basically. You know what I mean? Oh, so I learned all the keyboard shortcuts possible. Plus I'm already like a computer nerd. Yeah. And I would just control one, control two, control three, control four, control. That just cycles between your tabs. And I would do nine tabs at a time and just. Yeah, sometimes I come in here into his room and I'm like, what's going on in here? Because it's it's madness with his keyboard. I could do it at work when I had a day job and like nobody I, even knew what I was doing, even if you were looking at my screen. I've I could just move so quickly anything that anything like what you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh getting out of tier 10 quickly. 
you got you got uh, advice tier 10 quickly it's don't spend too much time like looking for the best designs and trying to 100 percent recreate them you know something that ryan taught me early on which really did it was really hard for me to grasp and fully accept but sometimes simple text-based designs really do sell yeah. just as well as fancy designs and you know if you're not great with graphic design and stuff definitely don't spend your time there i'd rather spend my time making a hundred just text-based designs that says i leave live in texas i live in virginia you know and trying those out and switching them out rather than you know spending way too much time doing a graphic which yeah. i still get caught i catch myself doing sometimes too sometimes it's, it's easy to it's go easy. down the rabbit yeah. hole but the biggest thing to your 10 guys is like it's not even about like what to do i think it's more about what not to do and i think the biggest pain point for tier 10 sellers is that like you can spend two hours coming up with some design that sucks and i'm not trying to be a dick when i say that i've done it it's just like if you make a design that isn't good enough, good enough, which whatever that means, right? Like it's, it's, you're wasting your time. You know what I mean? You'll spend longer making a design that's like not as good as if you just did a big, bold word. Yeah. You know, like I've shown you, like, I mean, you've seen the actual shirts, but like, I have like a one word shirt, one that always stands out in my mind that like sells 20 at a time, multiple times. I don't understand why. Uh, or 10 write, at a like, time. Hello in big I think letters. People and... get like every color of it. Yeah. 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 So it's like, it's not necessarily that we know something you don't. Sometimes you just like put a word on a shirt. It does well enough with click through rate and conversion rate, and then it ranks and then it just sits there making you money. So yeah, just make sure your designs are good enough or at least not, not bad because bad designs don't sell. And don't use like thin fonts. I feel like use bold fonts that stand out more. Yeah. Make sure that they can be read from the thumbnail. You and know? you also taught me too, white <clears throat> font looks much better than black because I used to write stuff in black yeah merch i think they tell you in the resources that like the darker colored shirts sell better so contrast you know a white text against a dark background shirt easy to read good contrast again just like simple things simple like subliminal things that go through the customer's mind that they don't even know they're thinking when they shop you know all right mark said uh if you delete a design from merch that has sales does it count against your tier up no not to my knowledge I, I would have no idea about that, but I wouldn't also delete a design that's sold before because it's already got a ranking on the BSR. And so it's still more likely to be bought again, even if there's other sellers competing with you. Yeah, agree. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, but I don't think it counts against you. 239 sales. Paul says down about 10% from 2020, making more money because I raised prices. There you go. All right. More money. That's what matters, right? Less sales, but more, more uh, profit. Love that. What I love about Etsy is the communication with the buyers. Drew, is that, that too. do you love it or you don't? Are you being I sarcastic? I like it. Okay, maybe you guys like it now, but like. Until someone's mean to me because I've had some mean ones. Some people get mean and then also it gets to be a lot at some point. You know, like one of my 2022 goals, it was one of my fourth quarter goals this year. And I was so close to making it is you, being a star seller on Etsy. And no, that doesn't get you very much. You know, to me, it was just a personal achievement uh, in how far I've come in the last six months. And I'm like so close to getting it. So I've got to bump that into the first quarter 2022. That will be my new challenge, um, yeah. which I do a series on too. The Yeah. Check out Marielle's YouTube channel. She does a... Uh... I'll, I'll link to it in the description. If I didn't, I should have <laughs> happy right. new year from San Diego. Still waiting to hear back about merch application, Etsy band account immediately. Um, just contact their support and they'll un unban it. It's just like a automated mechanism. I don't know why it happens. Yeah. I've had weird stuff like that. happen. Happy new year from Westminster central London. I still want to go to London. We're going to go uh, batch edit in Etsy. Do you want to explain real quick? So yeah, you can batch edit in Etsy. When you go to your Etsy page and you click on your listings, it will come up with all your active listings. And on the side, you can choose from active drafts, um, deactivated, et cetera. And so when I typically publish a bunch of things from Printful side, I literally go over to my drafts on the listing side, select all of them, You know, change production partners, change the pricing to how I want it, change the keywords or whatever I feel like changing, and then click all of them again and click publish or renew yeah and so even the expired listings because listings do expire on etsy you can just go to your expired section click all and click reactivate yeah so in the go ahead no that's i don't want to cut you off no no the... yeah in the listings like you know there's like between that you can filter between like drafts and active you most likely are going to be clicking active and then you can use the search function too yeah. so if you want to select like 
you can be strategic in that Etsy has sections. So you could create a section that's just like all your t-shirts and then create a section that's like all your hats, but you don't have to, because as long as you have like the right keyword flag, you can search the word t-shirt. It'll pull up all your active t-shirts. You can hit a checkbox that says select 40 or select all, hit select all. Yeah. And then the drop down right next to that, you can change like basically every relevant attribute. Yeah, for real, including production partners. Price, so publishing, pu published or not published. Yeah, and then when I run sales too, it's pretty much the same way. I select all the products or I use the search key. If I just want to run a sale on the shirts, I type in t-shirts and typically all my t-shirts come up. I select all of them, say run a sale and then create my code and that's that's it. It will apply the sale to everything. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good advice. That's really useful. Um, Caleb said, getting approved <laughs> for merch is a job itself. Yeah, it is. Good luck, though. I mean, I just, I want everybody, I hope everybody gets in. Um, thank you for all your help this year, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. Happy we could help. Been on Etsy since 2010. Been on fire the last two years. That's awesome. If you, hey, if you have a good story to tell, too, email me, and I'm happy to have, if you want to, come on the channel um, for an interview, and let's share your story. Um, batch edit on existing listings. Yep. Do you think about Etsy ads? Do you use them every day? You know, so I have yet to start playing around with Etsy ads. I do plan on doing that in 2022. You know, I was this last few months, I really feel like I've dived into Etsy a lot more and started using a lot more of their attributes, you know, and even on Printful side of things, there's a bunch of attributes that I wasn't using there, such as product templates to create a better thumbnail and stuff. And so I do plan on kind of optimizing those things that are easily tangible first, but yeah, that's definitely a space that I am interested in to going into, but I have yet Etsy to ad pay sucks. For Etsy, ads. <laughs> Etsy ad sucks. I'm not a fan. You used to be able to control your bids and I used to get away with like five to 10 cents per click per listing. And then all of a sudden they said, no more, we, we will determine how much you pay. And then they literally went up like more than 10 X Wow. overnight because Etsy said, no, no. Well, I'm still going to try it. Try it. But yeah, it's uh, are we a couple? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Still a couple. <laughs> Hi, I was wondering, do you use Pinterest for social media marketing? Uh, I use it for, number one, I post all my YouTube videos there, but you can automate your Etsy listing renewals to Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, probably more. Yeah. Somebody asked about in, uh, Instagram that was in my Etsy course, which um, I haven't even really talked about, but I did release the Etsy module of my full print on demand course as a standalone that if you guys are interested in, um, you can just go to ryanhoag.com forward slash Etsy and check it out. Uh, Cause it's like the most compre comprehensive Etsy print on demand course out there it teaches you like every optimization available. Um, where, where, where was I going with that? <laughs> um, anyways. Yeah. And in there, yeah. In there, somebody was asking if you can do it to like Instagram for instance, but like uh, you can use Zapier, which if you've never heard of, it's Z A P I E R.com. And you can basically do like, what, what would be very complex, like automation relatively simply. Um, you don't need to be like technical to set it up and yeah. So you can use Pinterest. The reason I'm in, somebody asked about Pinterest, like you can do Pinterest. You can do, I know I set one up. I set a zap up that like in the course, you can just clone my zap and then all you have to do is put in your accounts and then it, it just works. So it'll automate your Etsy to Facebook, your, your Facebook page, Pinterest, Twitter. I'm sure you could set up like more than that, but those are the big ones that I've done. Almost every time I tried posting a design, it gets rejected, even though not copyrighted. I'm afraid to post anything on merch, any reject. So it's it's typically not like an image that will trigger it. Uh, it's probably a word. Yeah. So, you know, definitely doing keyword research. I use uh, Ryan Hoag's search merch tool all the time, like legit all the time. So if you're looking at doing a shirt in a semi common niche, definitely just go check search merch and see if any of the other other sellers are actually selling and if they have a good bsr and that's a really good way of figuring out you know what keywords can be used and what keywords can't now it's not foolproof at all which you know we both know because we do that and sometimes they get rejected but um i typically try and find people's listings that are similar to mine and i look at the keywords they use to make sure that i'm not getting yeah that's one of mine. the benefits of doing it that way i just put a link in the chat too that's a link to my video called is this niche safe and it's not just about niches. It's more about just like validating as much as you possibly can to not get a rejection. You know what I mean? To just like maximize the safety of your account. And I would recommend just like checking that video out if you have the time, because it's not like a fail, fail proof way. Like you may still get a rejection, yeah. but it's a pretty good, in addition to reading the 
Amazon merch content policy. And I'll probably do like a new intro to merch by Amazon for 2022 on my channel where, cause it's good. Everybody needs a refresher, myself included, where we can just like read through the content policy and mm, refresh it. Yeah. <laughs> cause yeah, we don't want those rejections. Um, think it's better at first on Etsy to just sell teas or do a print on demand. Um, yeah. I mean, I might not pull up the slides that I had prepared, but like one of them was like, one of the notes I made was like, what should your first hundred products be? And I was thinking like shirts. What do you think? You know, I am a huge fan of the hats, so I'm a, I'm a hat person. But if you do hats, it doesn't help you on merch by Amazon or Redbubble. oh merch. Well, no, they're on Etsy. But the re the benefit of doing like a shirt oh, is that okay. you can post a shirt yes, everywhere. Yes, if yes. you do a hat design, it's like really just going to be good on a hat most yeah, likely. Yeah, very true. That's why I'm like, and I I sell a decent bit of hoodies too. Hoodies. And I would yeah. say hats, well, those four hoodies, hats, and t shirts. Yeah. Those and a shirt three. design goes on a hoodie like very easily. So that's the benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What else? eBay, Amazon, Etsy, three totally different worlds. They are. But what is worth pointing out is if you just do the minimum, and let's just say the minimum, to, the minimum to me is like, if you don't want to get worried about all the extra stuff you can do, you can still integrate Printful with eBay, Printful with Amazon, and Printful with Etsy. And you can just iterate through the process of publishing a new product via Printful to those platforms. That process is the exact same. You'll just need to have three browser tabs open, one to your eBay store, one to your Amazon store, and one to your Etsy store, but they're all in Printful. Yeah. And you never actually even need to go to the actual website itself. You just stay in Printful and just push products. And so, so yeah, hundred percent, they're different worlds, but like for a beginner, you can just like not even bother yourself with all the extra stuff and just push products through Printful and not spend money on ads, not do any optimizations. I'm not saying this is recommended, but like, I mean, it, it takes time. I definitely think, you know, do it bare bones at first, see what you're comfortable with. And then you eventually keep growing and building and learning and you know, that's at least yeah. where I am. And I feel like I've come a long, long way in the last six months since I started my Etsy store. And now I'm like getting ready to open up another Etsy store because I just can't help myself. I'm like a greedy little child. Tied to your FBA store. Your FBA. Tied to, yeah, my FBA stuff too. So yeah, she started her FBA business as well in 2020, 2021. See, what year is it? I don't know. It's going to be 2022. <laughs> yeah, I started in 2021. Happy New Year from Malta. Awesome. Happy New Year. Hugely disappointed fourth quarter on Etsy, been denied by Merch three times. Oh, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Hopefully, though, keep there was somebody that I had on for an interview that applied 13 times before getting Ooh. into Merch by Amazon. So lucky number 13. So use that as inspiration that, you know, one day you'll get in there. Um, and then on Etsy, like, you know, you can email me a you know link to your shop. I can take a look and just give you some quick feedback. Or if it's worth doing a full review, we can do that. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Said we make a great team. Uh, merch has been very helpful and responsive. Great. I'm glad that you had a positive experience with them. Uh, a G10 exemption that hard to get on Amazon FBM or is it just you having issues? Um, I know of a lot of people that have had issues, but if you just use the brand name generic, you know, generic G E N E R I C. And like, I don't think you can like do any of anything other than that to make it work for sure. But if you just use the word generic, it works. I think hundred percent of the time. Okay. So, um, but it, you know, it sucks because then you don't have a cool brand name on your products, but at the same time, it's like, I don't think most people care. Um, happy new year, Patricia. Thank you. 50 K from Redbubble in 2020 and then banned in January. Ooh. Oh my God, dude, Rob, if you want to tell your story, hit me up. I'd love to hear more. I'm sure everybody else would too. That's an incredible, insane amount of uh, sales on, on the thing is 2020. I believe it. In 2020, there was just so much money made. And like, I honestly like didn't really go into like any of those. I've just played it super safe. You know what I mean? I'm not lying when I tell yeah. everybody I'm in like super fringe evergreens that might sell once a year. Yeah, but you're in a tier that can handle that. Whereas like, I'm not in a tier that can really handle that. Yeah. Oh, Pablo just woke up from his nap. <laughs> uh, quit Redbubble after bogus copyright claim sided with the other person see i've never had that issue fortunately knock on wood right um i didn't even know that they would actually like litigate like that uh friggin awesome the curtis thing you're talking about super impressive so you probably already know um what i'm referring to but it's 155 we don't have a time limit in as long as we go but we also want to be respectful of everybody's time so let's just kind of get through some more questions uh at at two o'clock eastern i'll talk about we can talk about what um 
we think the most significant thing coming in 2022 for print on demand is, and for what it's worth, like nobody's telling us to say this. We're just saying it. Cause I think we both like genuinely probably are in agreement that it's huge game changer. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're not like, that wasn't the purpose of this live stream, by the way. Um, it's not even like really available. It's still in, it's still in beta, but a $500 budget and want to be full-time merch by Amazon. What do you suggest? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely like, I don't think of merch by Amazon success as correlating with how much money you have to spend on ads. Like I, it, I genuinely do not think that way. However, I mean, for sure, if you know what you're doing with ads, like you can definitely help your, um, you know, be successful. Pablo's climbing up on the, on the desk. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you want to spend the 500 on ads, like feel free, um, not required though at all. And what's up, buddy? <laughs> and <laughs> by the way, we've done like pictures of Pablo and uh, Onyx and put them on uh, little like stickers and stuff like that. And like they'll sell. Yeah, it's every so now and then. random, but they do sell every I, once in a while. I did a video on the how to do the like pattern, the all over print pattern. And I used them and I made a tote bag and it's in the thumbnail of the video. And I swear that tote bag sells. You can, you don't have to take me at my word, by the way. If you find it on Amazon, um, look at the, the BSR history. <laughs> like it's silly it's just a tote yeah. bag of like him his brother and uh people his like sister, it yeah. yeah batch editing how do you do that we answered that let's try to get through some more questions if you want to start from scratch what are you going to do merch by amazon uh tier 10 i mean like i was saying just make like text only designs that are good enough if you're not confident in your design ability if you want to level up you can do an all sunsets subscription which costs like three dollars and change a month you don't have to go there by the way there's a million places you can go for graphics but all sunsets like very affordable and like the vintage retro sunsets with text or like you could overlay like we showed the ronald reagan graphic it's like you oh, just yeah. get a graphic of and then overlay it and then put some text and it's like very simple straightforward process that we know works um you don't have to overthink it you know or like check out like juna detour shirts on youtube if you want to be like a really good designer too um, learn how to do it yourself. Like he's, he's got so many great tutorials and they're free. How many uploads do you do per day? I do, um, 10,000. I max out my merch. You do 10,000 uploads. Well, I mean, I got the uploader running on my side monitor right here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, see while we record the live stream, it's, it's upload. Actually, no, it Jeez. got hung up, but, uh, I mean, it's not 10,000, it's 10,000 divided by 64. Cause, um, 64 product types. Yeah. Cause I upload to all markets and all products and that totals to 64 per but I mean, I'm only doing that because they let me, you know what I mean? Otherwise, I I would just do standard t-shirts. Etsy, do you do worldwide shipping? Yes, I do. And what do you charge? Do you just use the default printful I shipping profile? I do use the default printful shipping, and it's typically like $6.99 international, but then some places do collect VAT, but it handles all of that for you. Yeah. So printful, when you integrate, creates a bunch of shipping profiles, and then when you push a product through printful, it assigns the right shipping profile. So it's pretty, it handles it for you. What's the potential here? How much do you guys make with POD annually? Uh, Robbie, rather than trying to guess, because I haven't done my numbers for December, um, but like I do have a spreadsheet. I do monthly income reports. Just subscribe and uh, look out for my video. I can do like an annual 20, 2021 video. I mean, I know on Etsy in the six months profit, I've made like 5K. It's pretty good. That's like from the being a beginner too. You know? Yeah, so from nothing, nothing. Yeah, and it can be fast. It can be slow. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm, I've am i had like income reports since the beginning that you can go back and look. It's not impressive though, but like I was just kind of learning on my own. So <laughs> I learned the hard way, you know what I mean? I learned the very hard way. And um, I also like for what it's worth, I don't like making excuses, but it's like, you know, I worked nine to five. I worked a second job teaching. I didn't just dedicate my life solely to doing that stuff. But yeah. what was nice is being a web developer. I could do a lot of it at work. So yeah. I doubled down. Yeah, you would. <laughs> uh happy new year thank you thank you how do you keep track of all your designs spreadsheet database perfect timing because it's also two o'clock um let's not even name the project but our friends at um merch titans are working on like a big big thing for 2022 it's going to be released um and again nobody's like telling us to promote this so that's not why we did the live stream or anything like that but like you know whenever it's ready because it's currently in beta um i'll be the first to tell you guys about it basically like what they have created is a central online repository for your entire print on demand business. So rather than us having to figure out like storing them offline, how do we store them? 
uh, upload automation, like tags, all this crap that like they have basically made it so that like you can drag and drop it and it'll upload everything there. You can structure them in like online, you know, in the cloud. Do people still say in the cloud? I mean, it's just online, right? It's digital. Um, so that they're all like organized there. They built in a bunch of controls. You can do just incredible things. I mean, I, I could probably talk about it for 15 minutes straight. Like, but you, like, for instance, like you put like a relevant keyword as your file name and you'll be able to like use that as your like title, as your tags. They write an algorithm. It'll pull the tags in automatically. You'll be able to do design batch editing. So you can take like a good batch of designs that you made and you can just like automatically apply clipping mask and their software will do it for you. So then all of a sudden you've got like two versions of it. Yes. And you can do a whole lot with that. I yes. mean, it's going to be crazy. Yes. I know. I'm excited for that more than I, I, batch editing is like. No, and it's going to change oh. the game for Etsy digital downloads as well. Like it's, it's going to be absolutely absurd. Like, and that's only what they've shown me. So it's probably more coming. Um, and I mean, this probably was supposed to be released last or this year in 2021, but they rewrote the entire project to make it like even better on the back end. And uh, that's going to be the biggest thing for 2022. Um, if anybody cares, right? Like, it's just like more okay, people's heads excited. are probably exploding. Like, no, not more stuff. I know, I know. But uh, this is one of those, like, it's like, honestly, a paradigm shift. You know, it's not like, hey, you can use upload automation, upload automation, but you don't have to. This is going to be like, in my mind, it's going to be an asset. Such a game changer a that it's going to be like, how do you not use it? You know? Well, yeah, it's an asset for sure. Because, yeah, because just the way it's going to be set up too is it's going to make everything so much easier, including like if you want to upload automate or whatever, it's going to be. Um, do you do coaching one-on-one? -on -one? It's not like my goal to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do take calls. You can go to ryanhoog.com forward slash book um, if you want to book a call, I guess. But it's not something I don't, I don't call it coaching. It's not something I do like regularly. If you're in my course though, you know, you can basically hit me up like whenever I'm at, I'm at my computer, like all day, every day. So it's like, you can just like message me on Facebook, uh, email me, put a comment on the course and I'll respond within like 10 minutes usually. So crypto is POD. <laughs> me and Marielle, we do like crypto guys. Check out, uh, the crypto.com app. Yes. Um, that is like our, we spent like a month, like kind of researching how to like be responsible about our crypto investing. And we came to the conclusion that the crypto.com app um, and I might do like a short video on it just like on a Friday where I do like my random videos yeah, and just kind of talk about why I think it's good. Um, cause basically you get like good, uh, return on, on your crypto just for staking it through the app. It's, it's a good deal. Mary J, do you have a YouTube channel? Indeed I do. It's Mary J's, Mary J's halls. I'll have Ryan linked to it somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think I dropped the link already, but I can drop it again. But she does, in fact, have a YouTube. I know. I'm trying to clean up my YouTube channel, guys. I'm keeping this main channel as my Amazon merch and my Etsy POD stuff. And then I'm moving all the other miscellaneous stuff over to other channels. So, yeah, she's subscribe. She's subscribe. reworking her YouTube uh, strategy because I think she confused the algorithm a bit by just a little bit mixing like a bunch of different just stuff on one on one channel. So I'll drop a link to her uh, YouTube. Peppa, he's being, he's being crazy. Yeah, he's got to go. Come on, flying so I just dropped the link to it. Uh, what do you think sales overall will pick up now it's post holidays? I mean, the drop off is very significant right after Christmas because, like, I think people are just doing whatever, like enjoying life, probably not shopping. They're shopped out. Not me. Everybody but her, I guess. <laughs> um, what's your take on running Amazon ads that just break even, drive down your bill? Yeah, I love that as a strategy for real. Like, if you just break even, like, in summary, because we got to move, but uh, when you run ads. I don't know why by default now they hide the column ACOS, but enable that column. All right. If you take one thing away, if you're advertising, make sure you go back in, enable the column for ACOS, ACOS. And then depending on what you sell your merch products for, calculate what your profit percentage is, your profit margin, right? Um, and then if your ACOS, which is a percentage, is equal to or less than your profit percentage, you're profitable. If it's equal, you break even, right? And if you can just do that, even though you like didn't make any money, you know, every sale you make, you're training the algorithm and yeah, yeah. then you're going to increase your organic rank. And you know, that's the game. That's the game, baby. Etsy ads seem pricey. It's not controllable. Yeah. I'm not a, not a fan of Etsy ads. She's not using them yet. Um, I stopped using them 
I'm not on Etsy right now. You know, I'm gonna get back on for the digital downloads. Oh yeah, did I mention the software I was talking about is gonna be like huge for Etsy digital downloads. That's probably the um, one of the most significant things too, on top of everything I already mentioned. That's gonna do. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, you're gonna compete with me. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Hi, do we have a replay? Yeah, yeah. It'll be available on YouTube and uh, Facebook, and uh, I'll post it to the other social medias and stuff. Uh, had the same happen trademark filed by someone after i originally posted tried editing the posting rejected yeah that sucks when that happens most of the uh keyword or most of the niche research tools merch informer yeah flying research um they have like a trademark search automatic trademarks yeah so alert. they'll check against the trademark database every single day if you provide your keywords and they'll try to alert you so you can remove your product before the algorithm gets to it Tier 10, just have three designs uploaded. What's the max time to cheer up quickly? Definitely max out your upload slots first. Keep in mind, guys, the tier ups happen at unknown intervals for, ev for I don't want to say everybody because you can get skipped. Like Marielle got skipped. Yeah, a bunch. But uh, if you're in like the Facebook group, for instance, like you'll see that everybody gets tiered up at the same time, right? So it's not that you didn't do what was required and therefore you're not tiered up. It's that you may have done everything that's required and you may have waited two months and you're still waiting, right? So it, now, I know in the Facebook group, too, you know, a bunch of people were organizing something like a search find buy for people in these lower tier 10 things, mm -hmm. which is just basically paying someone else that's in the group to buy your shirt, search for the right keywords and buy your shirt. So it organically ranks you, but it'll also help you to get closer towards moving out of that tier 10, because once you have a higher tier, more products, more visibility, more potential sales. So, yeah. So there is people working together in um, your Facebook group, Ryan, that are doing this search find buy kind of thing to help each other out of the tier 10. Yeah, the merch Facebook group that I have, um, definitely worth checking out. I'll drop a link real quick in the chat because yeah, there is like some people in tier 10 kind of helping each other out. Um, Which is brilliant, I love it. Yeah, you can, and by the way, these are sold by Amazon. It's not the same as FBA where they have like big rules about like FBA gaming the system to rank your product or game the system for reviews. That's one thing. Merch by Amazon is sold by Amazon. <laughs> so you can buy your own listing, not a problem. You can have somebody else buy your own listing, not a problem. Like they're they're separate, right? Because Merch by Amazon is, they, they own the listings. Amazon owns the listing. Yeah, my first two sales on Merch were me buying my own stuff <laughs> and they were terrible. Uh, how to do keyword search. I would definitely just try to like use the search merch tool and um, that's what I do. The search merch tool is free. It's great. It will show you the BSR. Yeah. And when it comes to like doing the research, like my strategy often is like, if I don't know what to start with, you can just hit search and look at the best sellers. And then you might see like cat shirts. So then you do a re you start again with the search. You say like funny cat shirt. And then you see, you start scrolling and you're like seeing different niches within yeah. that niche. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it's like, in 2022, I'm going to get a three new cats, yeah, like something crazy and ridiculous like that. But like somebody puts it on a shirt and it sells. And then you're like, okay, I'll make that version of some version of that shirt. I agree. And that's basically you just kind of like refine, 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 or go for the top level, you know, funny cat shirt. And then you're going to be like one of a million and it's going to be really tough. But if you niche down, you have a better, better chance. If a keyword has a trademark application, but no registration number yet, would you use it? I, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, with the whole, like, application process, like, they may say live, but if it doesn't have that registration number, it can still get rejected. We saw this a ton in 2020. In 2020, 2020 it was 2020. 2020. Yeah. Um, like, I remember there were, like, three different people trying to trademark Black Lives Matter at the same time for t-shirts, and I don't think any of those got through. You know what I mean? But if you looked, it said live. And they all use different classifications that were all like fringe related to t-shirts. Yeah. Like people are just trying to be like trademark trolls. And um, that's the whole reason why like they go for opposition. And that's why it takes time to get a trademark too, because like they stay published. I mean, I'm not an expert, but like you give it a period of time so that other people can file like opposition. There's even a Facebook group called Trademark Watchdogs. I did a video with somebody uh, from there who's like an expert where they try to stop frivolous trademarks, but he said it's getting harder and harder basically which of course went right. Of course it is. <laughs> um, goals, tear up, open new Etsy shop. Did you say something about Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's your seller central doing? Yeah. So fourth quarter is kind of a sticky quarter to kind of start the FBA process. Um, so I have inventory stranded, but in addition to that, I'm also, you know, the manufacturer and the 
doing my own production on some of the other products in my uh, Seller Central account. So it's it's been a crazy year, but finally my product from China came into FBA. I followed his course, got into FBA. Now I'm just working to clean up some loose ends and can't wait to see how Q1 starts off for me. Yeah. yeah her product's going to do well. It sucks that you didn't get the... The Christmas sales. I know, though. I know. I, they, I Amazon's tried. moving slow in the fourth quarter, big time. Super slow. <laughs> and uh, also, just like whatever that issue is, like her identity verification that like they did on a video call, like where you like hold up the documents like six times. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, it's it's not valid anymore." I know. It's like what <laughs> out of nowhere. So they're they're annoying, but working. White text on black does the best. Yes. Um, deleted a design that sold because it was political, afraid. Yeah, I mean, in yeah. that case, there's no problem. Definitely. Uh, not a fan of customer service, he said. What's the best way to find low competition keywords and a lot of demand? Uh, I don't know if it's, it might be a myth that that even is a thing. Cause like, imagine that there was a way to do that, you know, like it would, then in the blink of an eye, it. it would change. Yeah. yeah. So um, happy new year from India. Happy new year. Happy new year. Deleted designs do not count against your tier up. Yep. Private listing for friend's school sold 50 quickly, deleted it. By the way, on that note, you know, he's he used oh, his friend's smart. school event to sell 50 designs to tear him up. The uh, I did a video that I heard on a podcast about a million dollar profit merch by Amazon seller from like 2017. And he didn't do it by like the traditional way everybody else is doing it. He did it by just going to like local businesses and seeing if they wanted their shirts. Not That's brilliant. He got paid to do it. <laughs> He got paid to do it. Like he had them pay him to do it. You know what and I then mean? He still made the money. On the yes, show, yes, you know? yes. Well, <laughs> oh, genius. I'll be walking around to the neighbor's houses, knocking on doors like I'm selling cookies. Would you guys like a shirt? Yeah. <laughs> a shirt with your face on it. Well, think about it. Most people, they Google it and then they go to Custom Inc. and they pay like $40 for a t shirt. Yeah, I, I mean, and the nice thing is like you can take that and kind of put that as a listing on Etsy saying, you know, business shirts, you you know, you could have a whole Etsy store just based on customizing people's business shirts and stuff too. So if it worked for you on Amazon, I'm sure it'll work just as well on Etsy, especially with the customization ability. Yeah. Uh, Tammy says, is Printful doing better with shipping times? They really have been. Yeah. I love experience. it. Yeah. I've got, I mean, so far that's like definitely one of my best things in my star seller thing that I'm always checking. My on-time deliveries are like at a 96%, which is above what you would need. Um, yeah. Printful did incredibly well. I agree. Uh, this Q4, I'm looking right now at my orders and I had an order come in yesterday at 1156 AM. And it got fulfilled already. Like they're turning stuff around in like 24 hours now. I know. And it's really helping, you so, know, with uh, reviews too. That's awesome. Because a bunch of people review like what, how did it get here so quick, you know? And so it's working out in my benefit. Do you think, Debbie asked, do you think Pinterest helps for advertising or does it just give others ideas? It's, it, it for sure does, Debbie. I mean, it'd be tough to like track exactly. Um, setting up like, I don't even know. It depends on where you're actually driving traffic to, to even be able to track. But like. Pinterest does rank pretty well in Google, Google images. Pinterest itself is a big ecosystem that, um, by the way, you can try print Pinterest ads. Um, it, for sure, it doesn't hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. It definitely doesn't hurt, you know? Um, let's see. What do you think about buying an account? I mean, I can't really speak to that. I've never bought an account. Like, I know you're not, you're, you're supposed to just say like, oh, don't do that. But like, I understand also that there are people that cannot get in. And for those people, I feel extremely bad for you. No, uh, but I've also heard of as soon as you change your bank information, the account gets triggered or something like that. So I wouldn't know. I, I I don't know either, but I have heard horror stories about people buying expensive merch accounts and then changing the yeah, bank. For what it's worth too, there's people on Empire Flippers that sell merch accounts worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, I don't know how Crazy. they do it. I don't know how they do it, but. Uh, That's cool though. Yeah. Have you ever had dealing with a guy called Martin? I got my account terminated. I have not. I'm sorry to hear that though. That really sucks. Part two, led to termination, wasn't resolved, gutted silhouette of a van. That's crazy. Um, sorry to hear that story. No, I haven't heard of that, but it does suck that like, yeah, you can lose everything and uh, and not even have done anything wrong. <laughs> Pretty much my Etsy experience. I mean, I definitely probably like did some designs that I shouldn't have put on Etsy, but like they weren't like big infringing type things. You know what I mean? They yeah. were designs that there were hundreds of other versions of. And that was probably only like two of the, six or seven that I got pulled. 
other times people just like reported them because I was their competition. Yeah. And there's nothing on it. There's no mechanism where Etsy comes in and says, uh, no, it's okay. Or anything like that. You just get penalized. So yeah, learn the hard way. Many vehicle shapes are trademarked like the VW. Yeah. I did see those trending, but it seems like the VW, the Jeeps for sure. We know that don't do those merch auto uploaded the shirt and then it got taken down. That sucks. If you're in the UK, would you open a US seller account? Yes, for sure. US market's bigger. And um, what's cool is like the taxing, it, even though taxes suck everywhere, including the US, um, having sold in Amazon FBA UK, I will definitely say with confidence that the way we do it here is better than uh, the way you do it there with VAT. Because <laughs> like, yeah. as soon as my goods touched shore there, I had to pay VAT. I'm like what? So yeah. I'm like in the whole, like all this money. And then you pay it on revenue, not profit. It was just absurd. Um, so I don't do that anymore. Happy new year from Ireland. 13, all from one computer and one bank. I don't know. What the, is the payment process with Printful fully integrated into Etsy, like hands off sales from seller, no seller ordering on Printful. It is completely integrated and streamlined. Yeah. Do you want to tell how it works real quick? Um, sorry. I, z I zoned out for a second. Like you make a sale on Etsy customer pays Etsy. Yep. Etsy pays you on a delay. Printful detects the order. Bills you, so bills us. Yes. So Printful gets their money before they produce the product. Then they ship it out to the customer. And on a delay, you get the money from Etsy. Yeah. And the annoying thing is, is like if you have a specific credit limit and stuff and you're making pretty good sales and you have it tied, if you have Printful tied to taking money out of your credit card, you know, your credit limit runs up really quick. I know I'm having that problem, which is a good, good problem, problem to have in it, but I also probably spend too much too. So it's not. <laughs> You just need to have, yeah, make sure you have the funds to pay print full. Pablo stealing the show. <laughs> full-time merch realistic. I know people that are full-time. It is realistic because if they can do it, there's no reason why you can't. Um, but like also, you know, just scale up slow. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't put too much pressure on yourself to like be full-time. Although, I mean, at the same time too, I'm like saying this, but like if you talk to me like off camera, I would be like, yeah, man, why not? Like, you know, like I don't put limitations on yourself, like mental limitations, at least on what you can accomplish. But, you know, there is a tier system that you have to work within and it's not ideal to be like in tier 10 when, when wanting to be full time. Yeah. You know, it helps to be in tier 20,000 and then go for it. Um, but I know, you know, many people that make a good amount of money. <laughs> you could definitely live off of. Uh, can we do only text based on Redbubble? Yes. I actually think you should get to like 500 listings on Redbubble just doing text only. By the way, um, there's a website uh, that you can check out automatepod.com again it's not for you know beginners i would say but essentially like this is just a chrome extension it's got like a three minute setup it works in canva it works in photopia and you can make text only designs <laughs> like very 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 easily because it works for it's just it's automation it does it yeah. for you it'll swap the text in and out you can mix it in with graphics obviously as well and uh it'll download them for you and um uh, not that you need to do that again. Like I'm not, you know, because it costs money to use the tool, but it's it's there. If, if, if like time is a barrier for you and you're like, I don't have enough time. Well, there are solutions. Um, how many more comments do we have? I don't want to keep everybody too long because I know, you know, New Year's Eve, y'all got things to do. I do appreciate everybody still being here. Uh, name of the person that teaches design, Juna at Detour Shirts. I'll drop a link to uh, his YouTube channel. Friend of the channel, me and him do... Um, videos and live streams together you tour sure it's great youtube channel for pod design he's also he does more than just design but he's a professional graphic designer so when he does tutorials he's like he really understands like what he's doing could you recommend a few brands and material makeup for t-shirts and hoodies i mean <laughs> i like the gildan 64,000 on printful yep, it's also too. the cheapest one i mean i I actually like it though. It actually is comfortable. It's called soft style. It's very comfortable. It's thin. It's kind of like the worn out t-shirt material, which like, whereas Amazon's is like thick and like cardboard straight, um, super soft. Yeah. I typically go with the cheapest ones and they always turn out well. I mean, I've ordered my family a bunch of different stuff for each of the siblings and it all turns out amazing. Yeah. And the Bella canvas 3001 is also extremely popular. And that's like, I love that shirt too. It's like a little bit thinner and lighter. So, um, those two are like very highly reviewed, very yeah. popular. The ones I don't like are like the merch by Amazon is called port and company. 
Um, I think all their products are that that um, Porton company. Yeah, it's just and, cheap material. Yeah, they kind of suck. And then also, uh, Gildan heavy cotton shirts. I'm just not a fan of. Well, anything heavy, heavy is. I just don't like how it's like fits though. You know, like I like a fitted shirt, and yeah. those are like just loose, baggy. Like I'm not not into that. Um, hopefully we didn't make it miss any damn 10k listings a day so not i mean 10k listings technically but it's more or less like uh 150 <laughs> i think it's 156 designs times 64 i think is that what i it, definitely feel you 64. with that one though because once i got tiered up to a thousand and i saw that i had like 60 uploads a day i was like oh hell no no way <laughs> like 10 is already a lot but i'm not blowing up everybody else's like places where you're uploading i'm just in like super random ones you know oh, no i wasn't saying that i just yeah. i feel for you because it's it's annoying oh yeah kitty number two says love your content thank you for that uh found a site that has a bunch of your designs from amazon the first time that happened to me i was like i was actually more excited than i was mad <laughs> i'd have had it happen because <laughs> i was like damn they cared enough to like steal my design but what i realized is um until merch by amazon fixes the fact that they make and i learned this this year i didn't even know uh, that they make the full high resolution PNG that we upload from our computer available on the front end. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. It's a good review. It's not people me. doing it. It's like a couple really sharp like engineers writing bots that go and steal those designs. That's cool. Because like I guarantee you, nobody's doing it manually. I want to. If bot. you've seen these websites, they'll post like five thousand, ten thousand listings. Yeah. They just they just copy Amazon. And hope that they rank on Google. And uh, yeah, it sucks. I'm not a fan of that at all. Obviously, it's taking away our sales. Well, yeah. They do it to eBay too. <laughs> like it's, but I can't tell if it's like on eBay. I'm like, are they drop shipping it and then buying it from Amazon to eBay? Or so I don't know. Anyways, I th for FBA they were doing that with some of my FBA products. Uh, is it complicated to learn? Sorry, I don't know um, what that was in reference to because we're behind on the, uh, we're behind on the comments, Debbie. Sorry about that. Uh, my email, I don't want to get blown up, but it's just ryan at ryanhoog.com. I do answer all of them myself, so don't blow me up, please. Uh, not a pre-recorded show. We're here. Your dreams online. You two do more lives like this. I appreciate that. Thank you. We didn't really put that much thought into it. I just figured we'd have fun. Um, talk, so if not print on demand, we just talk like life, I guess. Because <laughs> like, honestly, off camera, what do we talk about? They talk about like... <laughs> I mean, we talk about a Funny lot of stuff, different things. Crypto a lot. Health. Money making opportunity. Health. Yeah. yeah. Living off grid kind of stuff. <laughs> stuff that we didn't think we'd have to. Yeah. yeah. Never seen one of your live streams. Thank you for watching. Software for digital downloads. Um, I, See, it's in beta. So like rather than name it right now, just kind of like stay tuned, subscribe to the YouTube channel or, or my mailing list. And for like when it's ready, I'll let you guys know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We went to Vegas though earlier in the year and like met up with... uh. We didn't go to meet up with them. We just went to like have fun in Vegas. But like we met up with uh, the guy who made it, you know, the the guy who owns Merch Titans, really good guy, met him and his fiance and um, they were telling us like all about it. So that's why that's how we got the inside scoop. Want to reapply for merch? Use a new email. Yeah, I don't know if the phone number matters. What's your email? Ryan at Ryan Hogue. They lost an entire facility in Kentucky. Yeah, that was really tragic. Sorry for... Um, everybody involved at like that's like such a crappy way to go like the roof caved in on them jesus yeah not good did i manage to get into walmart no but travis uh that i had on my channel that was talking about it reached out to me this week with another hopefully fingers crossed way of getting in so uh the ball is in somebody that works at walmart's court right now I've been emailing back and forth maybe i'll get in maybe i won't if i get in though i'll obviously let you guys know uh, Etsy shop better to upload 10 listings a day or 300 at once. Uh, I mean, for your like own peace of mind, I would say 10, but it, it doesn't really matter. I don't see any difference. I don't think there's a difference. I used to just like, you were telling me though, that you thought that people were being rewarded or the algorithm was rewarding people that were uploading consistently every day. So. I thought that for merch by Amazon more than Etsy. Though. Oh, on Etsy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I like uploading 300 at once if I can. Yeah, I I would just like put on Netflix and like just upload yeah, mindlessly. Yeah, I do that. You know, like, but ha that's where having multiple computer monitors helps and like a TV above your monitor, your your main monitor. How do you do 10K a day? Um, using Automate POD to automate designs and then Merch Titans upload automation to automate uploads. But again, there's no need to rush into this. 
I say, whenever I'm like talking about my courses, I say, start scale and automate, like kind of like in that order, you know, walk before you jog, before you run. Um, it's not even required. This is just how I go about it. Cause I'm doing like, I wouldn't be able to do YouTube. Like I do if I was spending all day, like uploading to merch, you know what I mean? And I like doing YouTube. So it frees up so much time. I'm at the point of needing branding for Amazon seller print full integration. I would just try to use generic as your brand and then just like not worry as much about building a true brand on Amazon. Although, I mean, if that's what you want to do, then you have to kind of work with their support to try to figure out a way of getting the green light on a, uh, something other than generic as your brand name. Happy new year. Happy new year. Great news. Start uploading to Etsy again. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, guys also keep that like 365 day perspective, you know, even though we just got out of the best time of year, it's like, We'll be back before you know it. It's it's about to be 2022. We will be back here before you know it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, mine haven't even really dropped off. I'm pretty consistent still. Last January was good. Like, I'm still having, like, someone just bought, like, six sweatshirts from me, you know, in one order. And Yeah, that was awesome. You customized them for them, right? Yeah, I did. But customization is just text. How much did you charge per sweatshirt? Tell I'm them. scared. Tell them. No, people are going to hate me. No, tell them. <laughs> $45. $45 per sweatshirt. And she was selling the, uh, hopefully that person's not watching this. Um, selling like the $20.75 sweatshirt from Printful. Yeah. So. I did well. <laughs> nice today. profit margin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you advertise first as beginner? Etsy, Seller Central, or Merch by Amazon? Um, well, like Amazon in general uses the same advertising console. They, they finally got smart and like merged the two cause they used to be separate. And, um, uh, I would say Amazon, just do Amazon. What do you think about let's go Darwin? I mean, I don't know what that is. I just saw it for the first time on the stream, I but like, like that could be the start of something. Yeah, I, I don't so. know. It could be, that's how it starts though. We don't necessarily know up front. We kind of see it, but by the time you see it and you're like, it's so obvious it's too late. Right. So test it. Yeah. But also, I mean, I don't know. What if it's protected? What if it's trademarked? We didn't look at any of that stuff. I know, I know. Disclaimer. He's responsible. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> do you know if we're allowed to post graphics from all sunsets without text? Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to like uh, make it your own, you know, use it in, in ad text basically is the easiest way to do it. Um, thanks for all you do. Have you made calendars in KDP? Um, I haven't really. KDP, it's like, I'm just, I need to do more in KDP. It's just been more like a, not finding a way of making the workflow fit. Although I am aware of people working on software for KDP. Um, I'll tell you off camera again. I don't know how like in, in its infancy it is like it's so uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but I mean, there could be potentially like new things happening that will enable people like me that don't have a lot of time to like be more active in KDP. Um, using more like streamlined software. Uh, I watched Juna. I like him. Yeah, Juna's awesome. Fiverr is a great place for cheap bulk designs too. Yeah, just uh, with Fiverr, <laughs> it's like you just want to hopefully not buy stolen designs, right? Because the same people that are ripping the designs off and then creating Shopify stores and listing them there could be selling them on yeah. Fiverr. So that's the thing. Stop yawning. Oh, it's God. New Year's Eve. What are you doing? <laughs> early 12,000 in November 7,000 so far in December with only a day left followed a lot of your advice that's awesome prepper survival <laughs> skills if you want to share your story by the way hit me up and uh you can come on the channel and tell your story people love hearing the the success stories uh the site for automation is automatepod.com what courses and tools do you suggest to yeah I mean also for the record guys like you know you'll make it without a course. Like I'd made it without a course. It just took me a lot longer than it needed to. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's really it. And also like, you know, there's lots of free content on YouTube. So I'm not trying to tell anybody to spend any money on courses. However, the benefit of courses is like you get access to the person who makes them, like at least in my case, and you get what you need in the order you need it. Like that's pretty valuable. It's laid out literally like you hit next, it goes to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, automate POD. Uh, good to see both of you guys. Hey, what's up? Thanks for being here. Happy new year. Hard to make sales on NBA tier 10. Yeah. Tier 10 sucks. Um, <laughs> tier 10. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, every now and then though, like there is like a clear cut, you know, like if you were in tier 10 while let's go Brandon was trending, like you got out of tier 10, 
you literally just upload 10 let's go brandon shirts and you're out of tier 10 amazon though was rejecting those left and right there was a good three or four weeks though where like you could sell them and it was like so it was just like there's nothing to think about just sell that and you're good and then one day they were like no more and then it was like all right now no more you know and you had to be quick on deleting them but thanks tammy appreciate it uh standard merch t-shirt runs very small causing returns interesting reached out to amazon hmm uh the beta software you can message me debbie i'll, I'll let you know uh you two are great fun videos thank you happy new year appreciate that not gonna happen overnight feeling determined yeah guys i mean like pod full-time too like let's just be realistic here it can happen you know but like also be realistic like uh merch is gonna be your best bet with the highest earning potential but if you're gonna do merch like what we were talking about marielle's talking about doing hats but like if you do merch you're doing like uh what Mm -hmm. is it called vertical yeah, not right. landscape, but portrait. You're doing like portrait mode designs optimized for t-shirts. Well, take that design listed on um, Etsy, Etsy, listed on Redbubble, listed on eBay, listed on Walmart. Hopefully 2022, I'll get on Walmart. <laughs> and, uh, you know, every, the more online real estate you occupy, the more money you're going to make. And that's going to get you closer to your goal. And also like diversification helps like hedge against anything going wrong, you know? Yeah. And then talk about it on YouTube <laughs> and get a little bit more money, right? Like, I didn't have some crazy plan of, like, how to do all this. I just kind of, like, figured it out as I went. Uh, Cool. Looks like we're getting close to the end. Hey, everybody that's still here, thank you so much. Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks for the live stream. No problem. From Sri Lanka. Shout out. Spectacular. Replaying the broadcast. Cool. Glad you guys had a good time. Um, Buying a merch account, I can't really comment, guys. Like, if you cannot get in, and that is your only way to get in, like, I understand why you would go that route. Um, that's, but like, I don't know where you would even go to find one, guys. So, I'm sorry that you can't get in, though. You can also keep trying, but like, I understand that some places, it just seems like geographically they just don't let you in. I, I have no clue. I don't, I don't work for merch. I don't have anybody on the inside, so I don't know. Yes, it sucks. I feel for you. Do you upload the same designs again after a while? Yeah. If you have Pretty Merch Pro, you can go to the design tab and, or no, products tab, and you can easily select, or you can easily identify products that basically haven't sold that are going to expire. And you can delete them early to free up slots, or you can just wait for them 365 days and then they'll fall off automatically. And then you can just upload new ones. Hmm. Which products do you recommend to sell in Gearbubble? On Gearbubble? <laughs> yeah, you run Gearbubble for like a week to do your parlor. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I like bundled things with like, it's not, Gearbubble is cool in the sense that you can like take a shirt and a mug and have them bundled together so you can buy them both at the same time um, or you can buy them separate. So, I mean, I was just selling mugs and shirts for the most part, but I my experience is very limited on Gearbubble. Yeah, here for, you know, reference guys, like this is the Gearbubble catalog as of today. Now, I had dropped a video on Gearbubble this week because they were doing a lifetime deal. And the biggest thing that I don't like about Gearbubble, and this is coming from me who has used them from 2017, and Gearbubble has no affiliate program, so of course I'm going to be completely honest, uh, is that they charge monthly to use them. That's absurd because you can use Printful for free. They charge monthly for Gearbubble? Yeah. Do I need to cancel my Gearbubble? No, no. You signed up for free, but like to integrate. Sorry. Got you. For the completely streamlined like integrations, you have to pay like, and it's like, 200 a month, I think. It's absurd. And then you still have to pay for credits. But uh, just this week, like a couple days ago, they re-ran their Black Friday deal. Somebody sent it to me because I'm not on their email list anymore. And so I did a video trying to share it where it was like $300 and you got lifetime integrations. Oh, that's nice. So anybody that took advantage of that, and I, I think the link still works, but it's 500 now. So I'm not telling anybody what to do with your money, but Gearbubble's cool because like, you could, like what really I've seen people just absolutely crushing with is their jewelry and uh let me just show you real quick like necklace so you can go to like you know gold plated heart probably going to be one of your best bets and see but you guys can already tell why like i haven't sold a lot of jewelry because like how the heck do you design for a heart you know you have to kind of come up with a really good template both the people's names in it like it would just take forever plus marielle no you just type it in personalized design layer marielle plus pablo yeah, write it. <laughs> no, I can't. You have to do it in like Photoshop. Oh, you do? Yeah, they don't have a design tool. Um, 
but like, so you can, you can sell these for $39.99 all day, $32 profit guys. And I'm not kidding. Like this actually works. I'm in Facebook groups with people that do this. Um, and Valentine's day is coming up, but like the purpose of me bringing Don't this up was to one. answer a question, <laughs> not to, uh, not to sell you guys on gear bubble. Um, I just wanted to let you know that like somebody asked about gear bubble products, like their jewelry is really well done. The mugs are very cheap relative to Printful. Uh, Custom Cat also is free and has really cheap mugs though. Um, and then Gearbubble has like the travel mug. The they have like a tin coffee camper yeah. mug, and they've got a um, tumbler mug. Unique products, yeah. That you don't find on the the, the, the mugs are, platforms. Yeah, yeah, the mugs are good. Hi from Vegas. Always laugh when they say it's passive income. You know, I mean, like if we if I like never came back to my computer though, like I would definitely be making money for some time now without having to like you know. So it's, it's passive in that regard. You got to learn to love it though, right? Thinking about buying 25 shirts. The time to do that probably would have been leading up to Christmas and then everybody gets a shirt for Christmas from you, right? <laughs> Happy New Year. First time made the live stream. Thanks, Stephanie. Glad you made it. Happy New Year. Debbie, you're going to get out soon enough. Got teared up yesterday. Oh, nice. So there was tear ups yesterday. Mm. Happy New Year 2022. Should do it once a quarter. Sure, we can do it more often. I pay for the streaming. I pay like 500 or 600 a year for the streaming software. It's like, yeah, I should use it, shouldn't I? Hmm. <laughs> uh, how do you try getting back on Etsy with the band account? Yeah, Etsy's extreme. You got to be like Etsy's software to keep you from opening a new account if you get in trouble is crazy. Um, but basically, if you use like different, you know, tax ID, different address, different credit card, different IP, which I just did all of the above and now I have a new Etsy account. Rawr. <laughs> I'm just going to do it because mine. of, I know, but I want the digital downloads. That's mine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. I think we're almost at the end of the comments guys. So we're going to wrap up. Thank you so much. No access for MBA. Sorry that you can't get on there. Yeah. Um, depending on where you live. Yeah. It's brutal. Shine on. I also want to look into that because I know some people that absolutely crushed it with shine on. However, I have nothing to speak to there. I think it basically goes shine on to order desk. But they don't in integrate with Etsy. Yeah. I think it goes shine on to order desk. I think I have to look into it. And then order desk to Amazon, Etsy, eBay. Um, they know the Mac address of your router. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Although I will mention that I did apply from the same router with two different accounts and was okay. So. All right, we did it. End of the comments. Guys, thank you so much for being here, Mariel. Yes, thank you guys. Yeah, check out her channel, uh, Mary J. Halls on uh, YouTube. If I still have it open, I'll drop another link, show her some love. And uh, I guess the last thing too that I um, would like to plug is that I did the, uh, let's see, print on demand. Yeah, here. The last thing that I'll plug, guys, is um, the Etsy module from my full print-on-demand course is released as a standalone. And if you guys are interested, like, you know, check it out. It's just ryanhoag.com forward slash Etsy. And if you end up not finding it useful and you want your money back, all you have to do is email me and I'll just give you your money back. So it's a pretty good deal, right? Um, and it has, like, every single possible optimization that you can do on Etsy to basically stand out. So um, Yeah, I plan yeah. on looking it over. Yeah, it's good. Reviewing. It's good. I wouldn't say it's good if it wasn't good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year. Have a Woo. great night tonight. Stay safe. All that good stuff. Yep. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye-bye.